graphing radical functions. So first we want to talk about the graphs of square root and cube root functions. And we're going to graph each of these as the parent function first. Then the rest of today we're going to work on examples of how to transform these. So first we're going to make a table of values. And these are going to be the key values, the critical points that we're going to use. So the x coordinates, we're going to have 0, 1, and 4 for the square root of x. So the square root of 0, we get 0, the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. So these are going to be the values, our critical points, that we're going to use to plot. Okay. So once you plot those, you kind of see the pattern of where this graph is going. So it kind of looks like that. I know my drawing is a little shaky. And then we want to talk about the domain. It starts at 0, and it includes it. And then the highest value, it's going to keep going to the right, so we have positive infinity with the parenthesis. Range, lowest y value is also 0, which is included, and it's going to go up forever to positive infinity. And then the standard form, this is similar to what we talked about when we discussed transformations, but we have this a in front, which changes either the reflection or the stretch or compression. Then we have x minus h, and this is going to be the horizontal shift. And then outside of that square root, we have k, which is the vertical shift. Now for the cube root function, we're also going to have three critical points. And for that, we're going to use negative 1, 0, and positive 1. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Cube root of 0 is 0, and the cube root of positive 1 is positive 1. Now, when I plot these three points, we need to be really careful because if you only plot those three, this actually looks like a straight line, but it's not. So just to get a better idea, I do want to look at two more points. When the x value is negative 8 and also positive 8. So the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. The cube root of positive 8 is positive 2. So when we plot that, Negative 8 is actually going to be off my graph, so I'm just going to plot it here. That's about negative 8, negative 2. And then positive 8, positive 2 is going to be about here. So that actually gives me a better idea of what this is going to look like. So I'll trace this out for you once so you get an idea of what this graph is going to look like. So the cube root, it goes up and then it kind of curves in here. And it is smooth. I know it looks a little jagged right here, but that was just my pen. Um, so it should be the smooth curve through there. But we can use these three as our critical points. Domain, it'll go forever into the negative direction to the left, forever into the positive direction. And then our range, it will go forever downwards and forever upwards. And then our standard form, Again, we have a, and then the cube root, and we have, oops, this is supposed to be a 3, and this is x minus h for the horizontal shift, and then k for the vertical shift. Now we're just going to work through different examples. So I'll do this first one with you. We just have a horizontal shift to the right, 1, and then we're going to go up, 2. So we take that critical point, 0, 0, and we're going to move it right 1, up 2. And then from that 0, 0, we have 1, 1, and then 4, 2. And then here is going to be the sketch of our graph. So our domain, the lowest x value, is an included positive 1 out to infinity. And our range, the lowest value, is an included positive 2 up to infinity. So I want you to take that same idea, but use the cube root parent function to transform this one. And when you finish, check back with me. Hopefully this is what you got for the cube root. You're just going to take your critical points, shift them to the right 2 and down 1, and then you remember what it looks like. Domain and range should be negative infinity to positive infinity. Now in this set of examples, not only do we have a horizontal and vertical shift, but we also have this reflection. 
So I'll do example four with you and then you can do example three. So this one we're going to shift it to the left four and then up three and then we also have to remember that we're going to do a horizontal reflection. So we'll start off with our critical point at zero zero, move it left four, up three, and then because of that reflection, instead of doing this point and that point, we're going to reflect that and have this point and that point. Then we'll be able to draw our graph and sketch it like so. Then we have our domain from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then range is still negative infinity to positive infinity. So go ahead and try that with example 3 and the square root function. And then check back with me when you're finished. So for example 3, we have a shift to the left 5, down 1, and of course we have that reflection. So we take your origin, move it to the left 5, down 1, and then remember, instead of going 1, 1, we have to go down. And instead of going 4, up 2, you go 4, down 2, so it's reflected this way. Your domain is inclusive negative 5 to infinity, and then negative infinity to negative 1 inclusive. Now in this set, we're going to work with a vertical stretch, okay? So we still have that shift to the left, one, and we have a shift down, three. This time we don't have a reflection, so we want to start with our first critical point, and we want to move left, one, and then we want to move down, three. So here's our first critical point. Now, to get to the second one, we usually do one, one. But this time, we're actually going to multiply it by two. We need to stretch it. So we're going to go over one and then up two. And then our next original point is four, two. But we're going to multiply that by two and go four, four. So we're stretching this upwards. So this is going to be our graph. We have a domain of, sorry, the domain is inclusive, negative one to positive infinity. And then we have a range inclusive of negative three up to positive infinity. So go ahead and try that with the cube root function over here. Do it the same way and then check back with me when you're finished. So we have a shift to the left 2, up 2. So we take our original point, left 2, up 2. So here's our critical point, that origin, 0, 0. And instead of going over 1, up 1, we need to multiply it by 3 and stretch it. So we go over 1, up 3, and then over 1, down 3 to stretch that. Okay. Domain and range are negative infinity to positive infinity. Now in this next set of examples, still have the vertical and horizontal shift, but we're working with the compression this time. So I'll do the cube root one with you. So we have a shift to the left two and down one. And then this time, instead of stretching it, we want to compress it. So we take our origin, move it to the left two, down one. Here's our original. And we want to compress it by a factor of one half. So instead of going over one, up one, we'll go over one, up a half and compress it. Then again, over one, down half instead of that full. And then we can sketch our graph, put our arrows, and of course domain and range are both negative infinity to positive infinity. So go ahead and try that with example seven with the square root function and then check back with me when you finish. So we're going to shift it to the right one and up three and then we have a compression by a factor of one fourth. So we take our origin, right one, up three and then from there we go over one and we only go up one fourth instead of the full one. 
And then for our next point, we go over four, and then we need to go up a half instead of two, okay? And then domain is positive one to infinity, and the range is positive three to positive infinity. That's it for this video, so remember, if you have any questions, submit them on the website, and otherwise, I'll see you next class.